Lemurs. Dwarf lemurs, to be exact. Could they hold a secret to mankind's chances of exploring the deepest reaches of the known universe? One neuroscientist definitely thinks so. His whole team does. So where does that secret lie? It lies in hibernation, putting the biological process on hold. His name's Vladislav Vyazovsky. He's a Ukrainian neuroscientist. He's leading a team of researchers at Oxford. He says that harnessing the power of hibernation is vital to humans uh, if we want to venture beyond our solar system. And to help us get closer to reaching that goal, he's studying lemurs. They are mammals, just like us. They're very close to humans, as far as mammals go, who hibernate, okay? There's not many uh, animals that are similar to us who hibernate. Uh, so for that reason, he's looking at uh, lemurs, basically saying, have you seen 2001 A Space Odyssey? I have not, please enlighten okay. me. So there's like, you know, this part where there's like, there's all these different astronauts who are in pods, right? Mm -hmm. They're not sleeping, they're hibernating because they're pres presumably in there for years and years and right, years. Right. And that's what this uh, scientist is saying. This uh, technology was actually started in the 1950s. NASA poured a lot of money into biolo biological research. That was the peak. Mm -hmm. uh, but then after the space race, that kind of fell off, and now scientists are going back. It's been happening for the last few years. Let me quote Mr. Vyazovsky just to give you a better idea of what the hell we're talking about, okay? He says, quote, a journey to our nearest planet, Mars, would take around eight months using current technology. If if we one day hope to visit another star system, even if we could travel at the speed of light, the journey would take years. Being able to get, being able to go into a state of long-term torpor, which means hibernation, would make such distances considerably less tedious for the astronauts and conserve vital resources. The fact that large mammals such as bears and even primates such as the fat tailed dwarf lemur of Madagascar can hibernate means that theoretically humans aren't too big or energy hungry enough to enter torpor. So if they can do it, so can we. Can we? I don't know. This 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 is frightening. I mean, isn't this a really You're scared uh, of lemurs? I'm no hibernation. Oh, of, okay, sorry. <laughs> lemurs they're not really I'm not a fan of that. But I mean, hibernating humans, I mean, you have to like maintain so much of the memory and the yes. metabolism. I mean, are they thinking and planning of using drugs in order to do this? And if so, is that even, is that health beneficial so, to them? So that's that's a very good point that you raise. And that's that's what even, you know, Mr. Vyazovsky will admit himself. We don't know how squirrels, how bears do it, for example. It just right. clicks in their brain and they can do it. We, the way that we want to do it now, yes, we involve putting you know, uh, the humans in a very, very cold, uh, controlled uh, area. Uh, it also has to do with giving uh, these different medicines that really slow down your metabolism. But mammals, just like us, like bears, for example, they don't need those things. They, right. Their body naturally goes down to these very cold, cold core temperatures and they can just switch their brains off and do it. For example, without the memory loss, if you put a brain uh, in very cold temperatures after a while, uh, you'll, you'll suffer from memory loss. But they've done studies on bears, for example, and they see that they still recognize uh, members of their family even after they hibernate. So the, the, the brain isn't affected. So these are all hurdles that we have to overcome and it all starts uh, with, 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 with studying these animals and understanding how we can turn that very switch on in our own brain. Because like I said, the theory goes, all mammals can do it. Mm -hmm. It's all, it's in all of our bodies. If they can do it, so can we. It's just a matter of clicking that on in our brain. I mean, it'll so. certainly save a lot of resources, a lot of money, and a lot of time if this goes through as expected, so. Right, and then not to mention, you know, the tedious, tediousness of, of sitting in a spacecraft for years and years and years awake. Yeah. You can only do a Rubik's Cube so many times before that right. shit gets way too boring and you want to jump out of the, <laughs> press the eject button, mm -hmm. get me the hell out of here. So, so uh, basically, we're going to have to see uh, if this works out. I mean, I definitely see this as the only viable option. Uh, if we are theoretically going to do these long, long distances. Sorry for getting all weird on you right now real quick, but do you ever think that maybe there's other planets out there that have that technology already and have sent people out and they're in hibernation mode just heading for us right now? That They've been is, there for like thousands of years. That, that's mind blowing me right now. And you know what? I, I'm not surprised if that's already happening. Okay. All my I weird theories. The planets, no, no, it's not. Space I, lemurs. I promise I didn't smoke anything. This, nah. this, is, <laughs> this is a real story that we're talking about here. Well, we're going to have to see if lemurs hold the key to future space travel.